Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is part 5 of video related to designing of retaining wall. And this video is going to be very important if you are going to design a retaining wall. In previous videos, we discussed different basics related to designing of retaining walls those videos are also very important and the link of those videos are given in the description if you haven't watched those videos must watch those videos before this video because most of the things are from the previous videos and and these are repeating and you will have to learn each and everything if you are going to design a retaining wall and this video is going to be very important it is will uh, it will be a bit lengthy but a lot of things will be discussed in this video as you can see over here we will discuss horizontal pressure acting on the retaining wall and resultant pressure acting on the retaining wall vertical pressure acting on the retaining wall is all already discussed in my one of the previous video and the point of application of vertical pressure which is x is also determined in previous video so the main focus uh, in this video will be on horizontal pressure and resultant pressure and these are the few formulas which we are going to use and you will have to learn and remember these formulas and the third important thing is eccentricity eccentricity is very important uh, in order to check the stability of the wall and we will also discuss eccentricity and its formula so let's start our today's topic you are requested to please watch the complete video to get better understanding of the topic related to designing of the retaining walls so let's get started Horizontal pressure. The pressure acting horizontally on the vertical face of the wall is called as horizontal pressure. As if you consider this is the retaining wall and this is the vertical face of the wall which is facing the, uh, you can say the retained material. Okay. This is the typical cross section of the retaining wall and it is denoted by P, horizontal pressure is denoted by P and the P acts at a distance H by H from the base of the wall or from the bottom of the wall. If H is the total height of the wall then pressure P acts at a distance H divided by 3 from the base of the wall. And horizontal pressure P is determined by Rankine's formula and it has three different conditions and scenarios you can say and first one is level backfill if the backfill material uh, is parallel to the parallel to the top of the wall then it is called level backfill the second condition is surcharge backfill and the third one is superimposed load surcharge so these are the three conditions for which we are going to determine this horizontal pressure and then we will determine the resultant pressure so it is very important again you are requested to please watch the complete video and if you are new to my channel you are requested to please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates so first one is level backfill the first condition in order to determine the horizontal pressure is level backfill when the retained material is in parallel with the top of the retaining wall is called as level backfill this is the pressure p height h of the wall and p x at a distance h divided by 3 from the bottom and this is the level backfill which is parallel to the top of the wall and pressure p in this case is determined by using this formula again this is very important to remember this formula so here lambda this is called lambda lambda is the density of the earth retained as i mentioned in my previous video the retained material could be water or soil or the mixture of water and soil or uh, rocks etc okay it is the density of that material which is being retained by this retaining wall and h is the height of the retained material and phi is the angle of repose of the earth retained material 
angle of repose i will discuss this angle in the upcoming slide and uh, it is very important to note that angle of repose of water is equal to zero why it is zero i will discuss in a while uh, the second condition for horizontal pressure is by rankin's formula is surcharge backfill in case of surcharge p does acts parallel to the line of the surcharge pressure p if this is the retaining wall and this is the surcharge load if the uh, you can say the retained material is not parallel to the top of the wall but it is in this this direction and it makes angle alpha angle alpha with the horizontal in this condition pressure p x this is the line of action of uh, uh, horizontal pressure p it acts parallel to the surcharge load line okay and so horizontal component ph has to be determined by following formula so ph will also acts at distance h divided by 3 from the base and this component have to be determined because we are discussing horizontal pressure so this pressure will be divided into two components this component and the horizontal component and the horizontal component will be determined by using this formula again it is very important to learn this formula so again lambda is the density of the earth retained and h is the height of the retaining wall angle of repose of earth retained phi is the angle of repose of earth retained for example if this was the natural strata natural uh, you can say natural alignment of the sand and if it makes an angle with the horizontal this angle is called as angle of earth retain or uh, angle of repose it is the actually natural uh, natural earth surface which it gets due to the passage of the time okay this is it uh, it depends on the friction between the soil particles okay if it is sandy soil uh as i discussed in my previous slide if it is water then angle of repose will be zero but if the it is cohesive soil or you can say sandy and cohesive mixture of sandy and cohesive soil it must have it will have a definite value but in case of uh you can say water this value is considered zero and again this is the angle of surcharge the surcharge making the angle with the horizontal this is angle alpha the third condition is superimposed load surcharge so as you can see over here it is the example when the uh, retaining wall is constructed along side of the railway or you can say road okay and this load acts as a udl as you can see over here if this is the road or railway track and vehicles are passing uh, through uh, this road so it will definitely impose some kind of load on this surcharge and it will definitely have some pressure on this retaining wall so this load is uh, considered as udl and intensity of load is same throughout the depth of the wall and this load is considered same throughout the depth of this wall okay and resultant load p acts at distance h by 2 unlike the previous two cases the load p acts as at h divided by 3 whereas in this case the load p acts at a h divided by 2 from the base of the wall so horizontal component p has to determine by following formula so this is the formula this formula is same as that of uh, as we discussed in the first type of the load when the it is uh, um, uh, backfill is parallel with the top of the wall this formula is same as that of the Uh, is that uh, in condition a as we discussed in condition a so these are the three conditions uh, to determine the horizontal pressure okay now coming towards the resultant pressure as we see this is the retaining wall h is the height of the retaining wall and p x at a distance h divided by 3 from the base and weight w again this weight w the, which is called as vertical pressure uh we discussed this vertical pressure and its point of application in my previous video and you can watch the video by clicking the i button on the right side of this video so uh, here in this video we only discuss horizontal and resultant pressure for vertical pressure watch that video okay so 
and they wear w x at a distance x from the heel of the wall and if this is the base of the wall this is the b bottom of the wall and if we divide it in two groups uh, two halves it will become b divided by 2 so the weight w pass through the center of gravity of a wall and x at a distance x from the heel of the wall so to determine the so here are two pressures uh, as you can say number one is horizontal pressure and the second one is weight w so but to determine the resultant pressure r we will use the pythagoras theorem so if we join this pressure and this pressure by head to tail rule this is the direction of the resultant pressure okay and by using pythagoras theorem resultant pressure can be determined by using formula r is equal to under the root p square plus w square where p is the horizontal pressure and w is the vertical pressure of the wall so this is the line of resultant pressure okay and the resultant pressure r resultant pressure r cuts the base at a distance x plus y if we uh, add up x distance that is the distance of w x at a uh, distance uh, from the heel which is x and the resultant pressure where the resultant pressure r cuts the base of the wall it is equal to y so the distance of resultant pressure from the heel of the wall will be equal to x this x plus y which is equal to as you can see over here resultant pressure r x at a distance x plus y from the heel of the wall and y can be determined by using this formula that y is equal to p divided by w p is the horizontal pressure w is the vertical pressure or you can say the self weight of the wall multiplied by h divided by 3 that is point of application of horizontal pressure okay now there comes the most important factor for stability of retaining walls and it is called denoted by e and e is very important in stability of wall or retaining wall or you can say stability of dam which we will discuss in my upcoming slide by the title uh, conditions of stability of dam and e is very important factor in determining the stability of the dam so e is the distance as you can see over here e is the distance from half of the base half of the base towards the point where resultant cuts the base so this distance is called as e eccentricity and the stability of the whole wall depend upon this value and e is equal to x plus y minus b divided by 2 as is it is obvious in this drawing if b divided by 2 is half of the base okay and x plus y is the distance of point the where r cuts the base so e will be equal to x plus y minus b divided by 2 so that's all for today for more videos related to designing of uh, videos designing of retaining wall you are requested to please subscribe the channel and stay tuned as uh, i upload the video in uh one or two days related to designing of retaining wall these are very uh, important each and every video is very important the link of those videos are given in description also watch that videos in the end you are again requested if you are new to my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates that's all for today